Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Recently on the channel, we've been taking a look at the performance of the new Ryzen APUs, at least the mobile variants, with the new RDNA 2 iGPU. And these little APUs are absolutely amazing. I've created a couple videos. I'll leave links to them in the description. We did some PC game testing. We also did some 4K PC game testing. And like I mentioned in those videos, this is definitely going to change the game for thin and light laptops and mini PCs. So what I have here is the Asus G14. It does have a dedicated GPU, but it's totally disabled. I personally haven't even tested it out. This was the only laptop that I could get my hands on that has this new APU. And it happens to be the 6900HS. And along with that, we get 16 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 4800 megahertz and the all new AMD Radeon 680M iGPU, which is based on RDNA 2. It has 12 CUs and a clock up to 2400 megahertz. And for integrated graphics, these are the most powerful integrated graphics on the market right now. And this is a massive jump forward from the old Vega iGPUs. This beats the highest end desktop variant of those iGPUs and we're working with a mobile chip right now. When it comes to GPUs and emulation, they really do play a big role. In the past, it wasn't that big of a deal for NES, SNES, but with these newer emulators, if you want to get upscaled, you definitely want a decent GPU. And with this APU here, we can go all the way up to 80 watts, and this is the shared TDP between the CPU side of things and the iGPU side of things. I'm just going to leave it at 80. It's not going to draw it unless it really needs it. And with upscaling, it might need 80 watts, especially with the higher end stuff like PS3 using RPCS3. Now, I did run into some issues with different emulators. I couldn't get Yuzu to work properly. It would always crash on me. I couldn't get Xenia, the Xbox 360 emulator, to even start up. And oddly enough, one of the most popular emulators was giving me a lot of issues with this APU right now. And it comes down to the drivers. These are really new drivers. And I'm sure those emulators will work properly on this in the future, but the way it sits right now, I just couldn't get those three to work. But I still have a lot of stuff to test, and let's go ahead and jump into it. We're going to start off light here with Dreamcast, and then we'll work our way all the way up to PS3 and see what happens. Alright, so here we are using the Redream emulator. 3840 by 2880 the maximum resolution we can go. I'm running this on a 4K monitor over the USB Type-C display out on the laptop, and when it comes to Dreamcast, going into it, I knew we weren't going to have any issues with it. Next up, we have some Sega Saturn using RetroArch and the Yopa San Shiro Core, and I am at 4X resolution. We can upscale from within RetroArch, and to tell you the truth, the way it is right now, I am seeing some dips, so 2X would probably be the way to go, at least the way the drivers are right now. Here we have GameCube using the Dolphin emulator, and even with the drivers we have here, we're able to do 4K, Vulcan backend, no issues at all. I'm sure there might be a few games that you need to drop it down to 1440p or even 1080, at least the way it sits right now, but you know, we definitely have enough CPU power to push this emulator basically to the max. And since I was working with the Dolphin emulator, I figured I'd throw a Wii game at it. Tatsunoko versus Capcom, same settings we were using with the GameCube side of things. Vulcan back in, 4K, running at 60. I haven't noticed any dips at all. So when it comes to the Dolphin emulator on these new Ryzen 6000 series APUs, you're definitely going to be good to go. Moving over to PS2 using PC SX2, DirectX 11 back in, and with Soul Calibur 3, I wasn't quite able to hit 4K. I did have a few dips here and there. And if you take a look at Afterburner, we're at about 85 to 90% utilization on that GPU just at 1440p with this game. But there are games that do run really well at 4K, like Gran Turismo 4. Still using that Vulcan back in, but instead of running this at 1440p, we're at a 4K resolution. I also tested out Shadow of the Colossus, and with that one, we had to drop it down to 1440p, so it's kind of right there in the middle. And you know, maybe down the road with some driver optimizations or emulator optimizations, we'll be able to do all of this at 4K. But either way you look at it, this little chip is definitely handling PS2 really well. When it comes to Wii U, for about the last year and a half, maybe two years, I've had really good luck with Ryzen APUs. The 4000 series and the 5000 series do run this emulator very well. 
But with this one here, we're able to do Bayonetta 2 at 1440p using the Vulcan back in. I also tested out Breath of the Wild, and at 1440p, we can do 30 FPS. You can lock it right there at 30, or drop it down to 1080 and do 60. But I still think this is really great performance for an APU, especially a mobile variant. Original Xbox emulation using CXBX Reloaded does work really well at 1080p, and trying to go any higher with this, I get a lot of issues, and I really think it comes down to that driver. But on the CPU side of things, we definitely have enough power. I'm not sure if we can push this at 1440p, even with some really nice optimized drivers, but 1080p still looks really good for original Xbox emulation. When it comes to Citra, the 3DS emulator, and Ryzen APUs, I've never really had good luck. From the 2000 series up to the 5000 series, now 5000 definitely made it a little better, but I was never really able to go up past 2x resolution, and on the older chips, even at 1x it struggled. But with this new 6000 series and the RDNA 2 iGPU, I can go up to 3x with everything that I've tested. Now every once in a while you'll get a few dips here and there with 3D games, but OpenGL performance on this chip has definitely improved, and that's exactly what Citra needed. And the final high-end emulator I'm going to be testing in this video is RPCS3 for PS3. And with this one, it wasn't without its own issues. I could only get this to go up to 1080p. With every single game that I tested, and I went through about 8 different games, at 1440p, it would lock up in the menu or as soon as you start to play a game. Unfortunately, there was no way around it right now, and in the future I'm sure this will be fixed. The devs for RPCS3 are absolutely amazing. But right now, the drivers for the iGPU are giving me issues over 1080p, but I still was able to test Skate 3, and if we take a look at the wattage on this APU, we're close to 80 watts. This is one that just loves those extra cores and threads. And with this 6900HS, we do have 8 cores and 16 threads, but we're running a mobile chip at 80 watts with this one, and uh, you know, it's doing it. It's actually running constantly at 60, it's doing a great job, but it's really high wattage for a mobile chip. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there were a few emulators that I just couldn't get to work with the drivers we're using right now and the new 6000 series APUs. This will be fixed with basically everything that I want to test in the future, but I do have to wait it out. Xenia for Xbox 360, Yuzu, and even PSP. I was just getting a really weird issue with PSP no matter what setting I used. It was sitting at around 18 FPS with any game that I tested. I know this chip has more than enough power on the GPU and the CPU side of things to push PSP past 5X even with the harder to emulate stuff, but we have to wait for the emulator itself to be updated or the drivers to be worked out from AMD. But as soon as we can get something that works with all of that, I'll make another video. And just let me know in the comments below what you want to see running on this chip, because I've been really excited about the new 6000 series iGPUs from AMD. This RDNA 2, this RDNA 2 iGPU is absolutely amazing. And if you missed my first two videos, I'll leave links for those in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.